Hi, this is in the series of videos covering problem solving in rotational dynamics. So let's jump right in. Um, so this problem involves a rod that's being supported at a point that's not the center of mass of the rod. So you have an intuition for it. When you let go of this rod, it'll start to rotate. So that's what the question is dealing with. So when you look, look at the question, read the part one, what is the initial angular acceleration of the rod? I am hoping that you are thinking of standard strategy. If you are, good job. That's uh, the approach that I would recommend. So we are going to apply standard strategy to this through a free body diagram and all that. Now part two, we'll go, get to that in this video also. What is the maximum angular velocity of the rod? Now, hopefully you have this intuition that this starts out at zero angular velocity, and as it rotates, at the vertical position is where it reaches the maximum angular velocity, because that's where the potential energy is at a minimum, so the rotational kinetic energy would be at a maximum. So we are going to be using conservation of energy for part two. All right, so let's get right to it. So here's the free body diagram. I have a stick that represents the rod, and I'm going to draw the forces at their location. So there's going to be a gravitational force acting at the center of mass of the rod, and there will be a tension force acting at the pivot point, uh, 2L from the left edge, L from the right edge. And that's it. That's all the forces on this rod. Now, for the purpose of calculating the net torque, I'm going to pick this point where the string is attached as my center of rotation so that the rod will rotate counterclockwise. Choosing this as my center of rotation simplifies this problem because, frankly, I don't know what tension is, and this way, I don't care what tension is as far as angular acceleration is concerned. As far as net torque is concerned, tension generates no torque, so I don't care. <laughs> so I'm going to write down net torque equation including only the torque due to gravity. So for that, I need to figure out the lever arm. So let's uh, do that. So the lever arm is the distance from where the force is acting to where the tension is attached. So the center of mass, it should be at a distance of 1.5 L from the left edge. That means I think this should be 0 0.5 L uh, or 1 half L. Please go through the question yourself to convince yourself, oh yeah, yes, this is the lever arm. So once you're done, okay, let's uh, uh, start writing down equations. So we say that net torque is given by the torque due to gravity, so that would be, I'll make a counterclockwise positive. So plus mg times the distance, or the lever arm, which would be 1 half L. And that's it. That's uh, the net torque. There's no other torque acting on the rod. So this should equal the, the expression. So this should equal the relationship given by Newton's second law it's equal to rotational inertia times angular acceleration. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky, the rotational inertia. The easy thing to do is to use one of the two incorrect formulas because they are in your table. There's rotational inertia for a rod in your table that says it's a one third ML squared. And there's also a formula that says uh, rotational inertia of a rod is equal to 1 over 12 ml squared. So which is it? The answer is neither. They are both wrong for this problem. Because this is the rotational inertia about the end point, and this is the rotational inertia about the center of mass. So neither of them are correct. Um, so the thing you need to do here is you need to apply parallel axis theorem. So you need to take the rotation inertia about the center of mass, so it's the second one that will actually be important, and figure out what is the rotational inertia about this point, 
that we are actually rotating it about. So this is the parallel axis theorem, which says that the rotation inertia uh, about an axis um, that is parallel to the another axis that's going through the center of mass is equal to the rotation inertia uh, about an axis going through the center of mass plus the mass of the object times the distance uh, between the two parallel axes squared. So here the distance is 0.5L. So we need to figure out the correct rotation inertia about the axis that we actually are using. So this rotation inertia is equal to the rotation inertia about the center of mass, but we have to be careful to plug in the correct L. The capital L is not the length of our rod. Our rod is, uh, has length of 3L. So you need to be careful to write that down instead. So rotation inertia is equal to rotation inertia about the center of mass, 1 12 times m times the length, which for us is 3L squared, plus the mass of the rod times the distance. This would be L over 2 squared. So the first term is 9 over 12. All right. Um, the second term, 1 over 4, is 3 over 12, so 9 plus 3, 12. Oh, 12 over 12. So I guess we get just 1. So 1 times ml squared. So this is the correct rotation inertia for us to use. Once again, remembering that capital is only a third of the length of our rod. All right, so... I think I'm ready to solve for angular acceleration. So the angular acceleration is equal to the net torque. That would be mgl over 2 divided by the rotation inertia. That would be m capital L squared. Some things cancel out, like the mass. So it's good that they um, didn't give any mass because it cancels out. And L squared cancels out with a factor of L. So you get the angular acceleration of um, g over 2L. And you can convince yourself that, yes, this is the correct unit. Uh, g has a unit of meter per second squared divided by meter. You get 1 over second squared, which is the expected unit of angular acceleration. So that was for part i. So for part two, first you have to get a snapshot for the state of maximum angular velocity. So we can use the given position here as our snapshot one. So we'll use this for snapshot one, but we have to clearly describe what our snapshot two uh, for the position of maximum angular velocity looks like. It should look like, so rather should be vertical and it would be fixed at a point distance L away from the higher end point. Um, and in fact, this is the point where it was fixed before. So let me draw an auxiliary figure saying that this is the height where Y is equal to zero. So at this position, the center of mass of the rod is at some position Y is equal to minus L over two. And it's moving as some angular velocity omega. This is our snapshot two. All right. So we start out with the conservation equation. We say that energy is conserved. Conservation of energy. The rod, as it's defined, it starts out with a zero energy. It starts out with a zero kinetic energy. It wasn't moving. And the way I defined my height reference this is the y equals zero position. So it starts out with a zero initial potential energy. So when we say total energy at snapshot one is equal to total energy at snapshot two, well, this simply becomes zero is equal to the total energy at snapshot two. You have negative gravitational potential energy minus mgl over two. And you have positive uh, and rotational kinetic energy plus one half i, remember to use the same i as before, times omega squared. So this omega that's expressed here 
would be the maximum angular velocity. All right, let's solve for omega. So solving for omega, you get omega is equal to square root of twos cancel out. Uh, let's see, m g l over i. Oh, but we worked out i before, so we can just plug it in. M l squared. So omega is equal to square root of m g capital L divided by i or ml squared. Once again, L is not the length of the whole rod, it's a third. Sorry for this confusing notation. <laughs> so the masses cancel out, a factor of L cancels out. So the, the maximum angular velocity that the rod will have is square root of g over L is equal to omega. All right, that's it. That's it for this problem. The trickiest thing about this problem was that you had to remember to calculate the correct rotation inertia for the purpose of use in this question. So, um, all right, until next question, bye.